Good evening. Today we will study John Milton. Milton's Paradise Lost. Book 1. Uh, the lecture, strictly speaking, will be on Satan's first speech. In fact, not the entire speech. An extract, you can say, from that speech. Very powerful lines. Now, the lines are so powerful, so strong, you know. These lines display Satan's leadership qualities. In what convincing manner he can speak. That he has so many devils to work under him to wage an eternal war against God. Now, the lines are so, you know, I told you strong that some critics went on to say that uh, Milton is Satan's man. But that's not the case. Milton has just talked of his leadership qualities. Now, you need a bit of background over here. Look, this Satan, S-A-T-A-N, the bad in the, the devil, in Hebrew language, H-E-B-R-E-W, in Hebrew, Satan means God's adversary or God's opponent. This Satan earlier was in heaven, paradise. That time his name was Lucifer, L-U-C-I-F-E-R. L-U-C-I, it has come from Latin which means light, L-I-G-H-T. So there, Lucifer was the best and the brightest of all the angels. Everything was going good. Now God created Adam and Eve and said that Adam and Eve will, will represent me. Here, Satan's, I mean Lucifer's, that time Lucifer, Lucifer's pride was hurt. Now this is too much. This is God's tyranny. Firstly, he is above us and now he has, he was above us and now he has made, and now he is above us. And now he has made uh, Adam and Eve above us. This is what I am not going to tolerate. Fine. So Lucifer talked to all the angels to <coughs> fight against God. Now one third of the angels said, now we'll be loyal to God. They supported God. One third of the angels said, look Lucifer, you are a friend and he is God only, so we'll remain neutral. Now one third of the angels sided with Lucifer. They had a battle in heaven. Now God gave all these bad angels a crushing defeat. God used thunderbolt on them and they were thrown from heaven into hell. They came crashing down to hell. You know all these bad angels, what you can call devils, they cannot be killed, they can be harmed. They can be hurt, they can be punished. Now, earlier his name was Lucifer, but when he entered into hell, there was a change in his name. From Lucifer, he became Satan, S-A-T-A-N. In heaven he was very fair, very bright. The moment he entered into hell, he became dark, pitch black. Hence, devils are black, dark. Now, they were thrown into hell and they were in the fiery lake of hell. Now, in heaven and in hell, you don't have time calculation the way we the humans have. But according to our calculation, for nine days, nine days, they were in the fiery lake of hell. After nine days, Satan 
got some senses back uh, and then he saw beside him his close associate a close friend Beelzebub another devil B W -E L Z E B U B, rolling in the fiery lake of hell Satan now says to Beelzebub here you have Satan's first speech now the starting lines I'm skipping I'm starting from here that mind one thing all these now they are devils earlier they were angels in heaven they fought against God on Satan's insistence he only had asked all these devils now to fight against God so Satan talks to his close friend Beelzebub and says no worries friend no problem he delivers the speech and now look what does he say to Beelzebub Satan says now what though the field be lost by field you mean over here battle Satan says over here what though the battle be lost here you have a figure of speech interrogation how does it matter if we have lost the battle? All is not lost. Fear of speech, interrogation. You know, there is a difference between a battle and a war. A war is a complete thing. And in a war, you may have many battles. Like a battle maybe for one day or maybe for three or four days. That's a battle. And war is a complete one. So in the war, we have many battles. Satan says to his friend, "We have just lost a battle against God. When we were fighting with God, we just lost a battle. We have not lost the entire war." So Satan says, "What though the battle be lost? All is not lost." Now Satan talks of his engines, his weaponry, his strength. First, he says the unconquerable will. Satan says, you know, there is a difference between wish and will. Suppose you desire, you have a wish to Say, be a, to be a rich man, you have a wish, but then you have to work hard for that. You must have a willpower for that. Simply wish is not enough. And will means the strong, you know, willpower. You work hard for that. That's called will. So Satan says we have a will to fight against God and that will is never going to be conquered. That will. So Satan says the unconquerable will Number one. Second, and study of revenge. I told you in my previous lecture that Milton's English is basically Latinate, L A T I N A T E. Here, study is not our study, what we mean in, in English. This study has been used in the Latin sense. In Latin, you have one word, studium, S T U D I U M which means endeavor you know effort pursuit so Satan says we'll have endeavor you know a pursuit against God to fight always so and study of study of revenge the endeavor of revenge second third one immortal hate Satan says our hatred against our, our hatred towards God is immortal. That's forever and forever. Now, on immortal hate, you have figure of speech over here. A figure of speech that is transferred epithet. E P I T H E T. Look, hatred cannot be immortal. 
Satan and all they have hated against God and they are themselves immortal. That means they are going to hate God forever and forever. Hatred itself cannot be immortal. So a case of transferred epithet. Immortal hate. And fourth one. Courage. Never to submit or yield. Satan says we have courage within us. That sort of courage that we are never going to submit or yield before God. Sorry. Mind one thing, Satan will never utter the word God from his own mouth. He will say, He, He. He has fought against God. So you will notice that Satan personally will never utter the word God. He refuses to accept God as God. He says, He. So he says, and courage, never to submit or yield before him or submit to him. So we have discussed four things right now. What are things? Uh, unconquerable will, study of revenge, First one, unconquerable will, study of revenge, immortal hate, and courage. Never to submit to eat. Four things. These four things are, you can say, his weaponry, his engines, his strength. So he says these, these four things we have. So apart from these four things, what else do we need? Not to be defeated by God. I mean to keep on fighting as God forever and forever. Apart from these four things. Fine. Now Siren says that what is else not to be overcome? Like these four things joined together. These four things combined. After, I mean apart from besides these four things, what else do we need? not to be overcome by God, not to be defeated by God. That glory, uh, what glory? Uh, according to F.T. Prince, and even other critics have supported this, glory. Glory to God, the glory of God of our submission. That we, the angels, go and sub, we, the devils, go and submit before God, go and surrender before God. This will be a matter of glory to God. So this glory, that God is enjoying the glory. Finally, they all have come to surrender before me. They all have come to beg pardon. This glory of our submission to Him, this glory, He is God. We will say God, but Satan says He will never have that glory. Never shall his wrath, what wrath? Anger or might, power. Like if God is angry, I am saying God to make you understand, Satan never will say God. God's anger, wrath or God's might, strength, power, this glory of our submission to him, God can never extort from me, can never get from me. To bow down, to bend, and still beg for grace with supplying me. Imagine two armies are there. What this side army, army on this side. Think this side's army one general, chief comes, army chief comes, keeps his weapon before, before that army and kneels down, says sorry, what an insult to this army, to this country. So Satan says, I mean to go and bend before God, to kneel down and say sorry to him, impossible, no chance. He says this is something unthinkable to bow and sue for God's grace with supplant me having knelt down and defy, de defy his power. Deify, deify, 
B E I F Y. Deify his power. Look. B E I F Y is close to the word B T. B E I T Y. You know, God or Goddess? DT. The idol of God or Goddess. DT. God or Goddess. Look. Suppose to talk of us, we, me, me, an example. I cannot deify God. I cannot treat God as deity. God already is deity. Suppose a human being is there. I treat that human being as God. So in that case, I am deep, I am, you know, I am treating that God, that human being as God or a Goddess. So I am deifying that human being. Got it? Suppose somebody is very holy, kind, good, nice. I treat that person as God. So I can say I am deifying that person. D-E-I-F-I-N-G. I am deifying that person. But I cannot treat God as God. God is already God. So Satan says, you mean I should deify his power? I should treat him as God, as deity? No, no chance, never. Who? God, God, means he. Satan says he. From the terror of this arm. Satan so saying to us, but he over there, from the terror of this arm of mine, so lately, late, lately, recently, doubted his empire that he'll be able to rule or not. He'll be able to rule in heaven or not. He doubted that. Here we have a figure of speech. Exaggeration. Like this is exaggeration. God never doubted his own empire, his you know, power to rule. God never doubted that. Jesus says, you know, he doubted his empire that he'll be able to rule or not with the, because of the terror of this arm of mine. Exaggeration. Fear of speech. That were low indeed. He says, already it's a matter of shame to us that we have been defeated by he. We know God. And on top of that, if we go and bend before God, kneel down and beg for forgiveness, that would be really low, very mean, full of shame. That work, I'll not do that. You know work, if I say if I were the Prime Minister, but I'm not. Work, a word of supposition. That I'll never do, we will never do. Suppose we do that, that would be a matter of great shame. That word would be an now, ignominy. So normally, normally we pronounce it ignominy, ignominy. But here there is stress on a ignominy, shame. I G N O M I N Y. That would be a shame, ignominy, and shame beneath this downfall. We had a downfall, so we haven't fell down. You know, the entire matter, Satan's pride was hurt, so he waged a war against God and for that they all had to come to hell. His pride was hurt, so they all had a fall. Hence, pride had the fall, you know, we say that. Fine. So, it's a matter of shame that we had a damn fall. And on top of that, to go and say sorry to God, to kneel down before him, that would be a shame beneath that shame. Since by fate, my mother, we say that God has created us. God has created everyone, even the angels. But Satan says, no, God has not created us. We are all, you can say, we are like gods, powerful, divine beings. Fate, if instead of using the word God, I mean, Satan never accepts God as God. He says, fate created all of us, created that he, Victor, one who has enjoyed victory over us, 
fate created he we know god and same fate created all of us since by fate the strength of gods by gods he mean he means over here divine beings we were all the citizens of heaven paradise at one point of time so divine beings and this imperial substance you know imperial by that you mean noble substance you know noble fiery ethereal pure non decayable substance even this devils are made up of that substance that they won't decay that won't decay i mean they won't die the the, the devils won't die they can be utterly punished the substance it can't decay imperial substance cannot fail now what do you mean by experience experience is you know what experience is the extract of sufferings suppose a man has suffered he has but he has gained in experience satan says what's the problem man we just have lost one battle but the four things what we had earlier the unconquerable will study of revenge immortal hate and courage we had earlier now so we have and in this business that we fought against god what have we gained we have gained in experience so now if we go for next battle or if we continue the war we are experienced now we are better ones can say now since we experience of this great event yeah fight against god is also a great event it's no ordinary thing you know to fight against god great event that is fight against god in arms before in arms this is understood we may be these three words are understood before in arms we may be in arms not worse like what we had the weapons earlier we are not worse and benefit profit we have gained in experience now in foresight you know don't you make some plans and you have some idea what is going to happen foresight in foresight much advanced we may with more successful hope hope of success again you have the figure speech over here transferred epithet e p i t h e t see hope itself cannot be successful they have a hope that will get success hope for success we may may with more successful hope resolve to wage by force by force or guile guile means cheating cheating eternal war against the victor we say everything is fair love and war this is a war against god victor over there he says victor he never says god so we will wage a war against him an, an eternal war either by force or by cheating method guile irreconcilable you know reconcile means to patch up to go for mutual understanding to you know to again shake hands be or no our enmity with god is something irreconcilable which can never be reconciled which cannot be patched up irreconcilable to our grand this great four f o e four means enemy satan never says god who now triumphs we normally say triumphs we normally say triumphs but over here for the sake of emphasis satan pronounces it triumphs god enjoys is enjoying now and in the excess of joy excessive joy god has excessive joy right now that he has defeated us so you don't say soul proprietor alone he does not share that throne with us reigning holds the tyranny of heaven you can say satan uses one offensive word he is calling god a tyrant god is holding the tyranny of heaven my mother in line number 42 
when John Milton, the poet, was speaking in his own person, there he uses the word monarchy of heaven, monarchy. But when, he, when Milton makes Satan speak, instead of monarchy, Satan says tyranny of heaven. That's it. Thank you.